Hi, this is Rich at Denver ILMF 2012, and we're at the Cardinal Systems booth here with co-owner Mike Tate, and he's going to show us their uh, latest release of VR LiDAR. I'll let you take it away. VR LiDAR is the uh, integration of LiDAR into our existing photometric package, which allows us to collect vectors from LiDAR data. It also integrates LiDAR into the existing workflow that we, we've had for years. And over here on the screen, I'll show the LiDAR data set. This is from the Optech Bridge system. It's a ground-based LiDAR. It's a mobile-based LiDAR. Um, we have a two-dimensional view here. Over here, we have a three-dimensional view. Now, of course, from your vantage point, you're not going to see three-dimensional, but if I put these glasses on, I will see full three-dimensional. Um, there's a cursor that moves around on the screen here that I control. Now, as I move the cursor around, the cursor will drape the, the LiDAR surface real time, so I don't actually have to place the, the, the red dot here manually. Um, I, I can move around the X direction, and it will, it will place itself on the ground. Um, if I get into a very flat area, I can stretch the Z out and um, exaggerate the C for better Z acuity. Um, right now, I'm moving the cursor around in the XY direction, and the, the LiDAR is remaining still. I have the ability to go into a roaming mode where the cursor stays in the middle of the screen and the LiDAR data moves around. Um, again, this LiDAR data, the cursor is draping in real time, so if I move over here to this wall here, it's going to actually move up the wall. If I move behind this pole right here, it's going to snap up to the pole here. Now, since I'm, I, can, I can drape the, the point on the LiDAR data, if I need to move it around, I can do that manually in areas that I don't have a lot of LiDAR or I would like to interpolate a point. We have the VR LiDAR is running on top of our existing mapping software, which contains about 100 mapping, 190 mapping commands that have been in production for over, over 15 years, and they're all available right here. Items such as the ability to, to go ahead and get on the top of a curve and gutter, digitize a line. Um, right now, we're working on some semi-automated routines to help us with this work. We have routines that let us do things like fit arcs between the last three points. Now I'm going to go around the curve, and I'm, I'm going to use a convenience function to spin me around. And we'll go ahead and um, tune up our, our view here and continue collecting. As I'm collecting, I notice I've made a mistake back there. We'll go ahead and leave it for now. And let's go ahead and zoom in a bit here and finish the line. Now I've, I've placed the line on top of the LiDAR, and let's come in and, and edit the, the some of the work that I've done. If I need to, I can do operations such as move the point I'm sitting on. If I move back where the arc is, this is part of our standard mapping functionality that I can move the arc while it's still headed on the line and tune up the placement of these arcs. Along with collecting vectors, we also have the ability to collect items such as um, posts. And we're working on algorithms right now for semi-automation where we can place a point on the pole and have it put the base in for us. Uh, we can also put in things like text, which is, these are standard cartographic things, but they're now on top of LiDAR. Now, when we're dealing with, with LiDAR data, can you pause just for a second? Sure. When we deal with LiDAR data sets, especially ground-based data sets, a lot of times we'll have data on top of data, and it's very difficult to collect information in things like tunnels and overpasses because there's, there's data front and behind us. Um, this example right here is, is near downtown Atlanta, and we have a, actually a tunnel situation here. Now, if we wanted to come in here and take a look at what's going on inside the tunnel, I could place the cursor here, but again, because I have so much data, I can't actually start moving inside the tunnel. For this operation, we have something, a view function called near and far clips. I can turn on these operations on, and I can, I can um, move the near and far clips in and out, and I can actually isolate the data exactly where I need it. So if I, I want to get on this wall here and see to digitize something, now I'm inside the tunnel, and I can actually zoom right in on something on the wall and, and collect it. If I was wanted to look at some of the structure up here, let's say there's a pipe here, I can actually move these, these items all the way in and actually get a cross-section of this data right here. If I needed to look at the deck itself without the roadway underneath it, I could get on the deck, rotate up, bring my clip limit up and look at just the deck top or look at it from the bottom. Um, if I get on a wall here and then move around, we can get on the road below and then take the deck off on top of this. So having these things allows us to get in areas that are very tight, plant areas, overpass areas, tunnel areas, and collect data in real time in 3D. Very slick. Okay, you want more? Oh, that's good. Okay. So thanks for your time, and uh, 
If you have any uh, questions uh, or would like, like to learn more about it, they can be uh, found on the web at www.cardinalsystems.net. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Right, I'll send you an email when okay. it's up. Great. Thank you.